One of my favorite college football teams ever was the 2013 Auburn Tigers. They had miracle after miracle seemingly happen to them, and they ended up going to the national championship where they fell just short to Florida State. That team had a ton of fun players. You had quarterback Nick Marshall, running back Trey Mason, a defensive star by the name of D. Ford, and more importantly, a wide receiver by the name of Sammy Coates. For a while, Coates was one of the best wide receivers in the SEC and in college football. He was seen as a first-round talent and someone who could have a long and impactful career in the NFL. Unfortunately, though, after a couple of years in the league, things didn't end up working out for him. You won't believe where he is now either. In today's video, I want to go back in time and relive and retell the story of Sammy Coates. Talk about how he overcame unimaginable tragedy, his star-studded career as a Tiger, and then ultimately what happened to him. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about what happened to Sammy Coates. So going back in time, when Sammy, along with his mother and two older brothers, moved from Jackson, Alabama to Leroy, he was not looking to grow his inner circle. He said, quote, I just wanted to be by myself. Going back in time, Sammy grew up playing football and baseball with his dad, and it seemed like everything on paper was going great. They'd go to hang out at McDonald's or Dairy Queen afterwards, and in a very small town, this was what they enjoyed doing. This was also the same time when he met a kid by the name of Andrew Williams. This was the only guy at his school that was better than him at sports, and the two were enemies at first, but eventually became best friends. Things were not easy for Sammy growing up, as apparently he was so poor that he would eat leftovers off of other kids' lunch trays, or his friend would give him food who worked at a local restaurant. He said, quote, You never want to feel it again. This was all happening because of an awful tragedy. He was hungry both physically and on the interior, as when he was in fifth grade, he lost his father. Sammy Coates Sr. was killed in a car crash while driving to one of his two jobs, and on that day, Coates woke up and his grandma met him in the living room and delivered the awful news that his father had passed away during an accident. This left him weeping, and it still impacts him to this day. He said, quote, I think about him every day. I wish he was there to see what I would have accomplished, and he's my best friend. From the beginning, Coates was an insane athlete, and sports became his escape. His bitterness, though, nearly drove him away from football, and he was a very angry teenager for a long time. Physically, though, he was insane. He could throw a 90-mile-per-hour fastball and ran a 4.440-yard dash. He was always a high upside player, and when he got to Leroy High School, he followed in the footsteps of quarterback Clint Mosley and another star player in Philip Irvin. In 2010, it was time for Coates to step up, and for quite a while, he was not a big-time recruit at all. He'd end up breaking his ankle as a junior, and this hurt his recruiting momentum. When he would arrive for Southern Miss's junior day, his intention was to turn heads. During that day, he created a ton of buzz throughout the camp, and by the end of it, Southern Miss offered him a scholarship and thought he was the best receiver in the camp. But it seemed too good to be true for Southern Miss. His coach said, quote, They told Sammy, I don't want you to commit. I want you to think it over, but when Auburn and Alabama sees him, they're going to be all over him. Coates pondered for a day and then eventually decided to commit to the Eagles. Why? He said he liked everything about him, it was close to home, and it felt like a family. But, just like the coaches thought, it would not last long, as he soared up recruiting boards and became a four-star recruit. He said, quote, Talking to Southern Miss coaches was really tough. I called them the next day, but they were understanding. His recruitment had taken a wild turn. He grew up an Alabama fan, and everyone in his family had grown up an Alabama fan, but he connected to everyone from Auburn. But at this time, this was never supposed to happen. Coates had pretty much shut everyone out, including his own family, and was content with his one scholarship offered to Southern Miss. That's when we get to the craziest story of the day. When him and his friend were supposed to camp at Auburn, the morning of, he didn't care. Sammy didn't answer the door, and in order to get that offer from Auburn, he'd have to impress at the camp. But he'd already won over the coaching staff at Southern Miss and was committed there. This would have been fine for him, plus he didn't want to have to drive seven hours total. Coates said, quote, He basically dragged me out. He also scraped the Crimson Tide stickers off the window, before hitting the road. He impressed so much that day that he walked away with an Auburn offer and quickly changed his mind from Larry Fedora and Southern Miss. He committed to the Tigers because he said, quote, I liked Auburn's offense, the spread, and the fact they throw the ball a lot. I like the coaches, and I've really gotten to know them. That's why when he got his offer from Auburn, he committed and shut down his recruitment. He'd be even better as a senior as he was named the Class 2A Player of the Year by scoring 24 touchdowns and led his team to a Class 2A state title. Coates lost five games in his entire career at Leroy, winning state titles as a sophomore and as a senior. 
when he wasn't playing football, he was pitching in the low 90s and drawing attention from the Major League Baseball scouts. But football was still his choice and his future. According to 24-7 Sports, Coates was a four-star recruit, the number 25 wide receiver, and the 171st best player in the class of 2011. But how would he end up doing at Auburn? Well, let's take a look. If you're like me, you love fantasy football. Unfortunately, it's not super popular in the college world, probably because there are so many players. Well, the sponsor of today's video, Squad Blitz, offers a new twist on traditional fantasy football with the ability to draft teams instead of players. Each and every week during the college football season, We'll give you an opportunity to start a passing team, a rushing team, and a defensive team. From there, you'll earn points based on your team's performance, and this will allow you to have a new level of college football engagement by competing weekly with your friends on a chosen squad. This app is free to play on Apple, Android, and the web, and new league owners are eligible to win a promotional pack, which will include a shirt, coffee mug, and custom squad blitz trophy. To be eligible, you must be one of 12 owners to complete a draft before week one, post about it on social media, and tag squad blitz. You also have to have at least six members in your league. And personally, I'm going to do this. So if you want to play in a league with me, go ahead and click that link down in the description. And let's go ahead and do some fantasy football for this season. Thank you to Squad Blitz for sponsoring today's video. When he arrived at Auburn, Coates would injure his knee in his first year on campus and was forced to redshirt. The next year, he got to play some, but between losing and dropping passes, frustration would grow for him. After only three catches, Auburn had a disastrous 2012 season and they went on to finish 3-9, winless in the SEC. The entire coaching staff was fired, and whatever this New Day stuff that Auburn's newest coach Gus Malzahn offered seemed a long way off. Coates did know two things though, he never wanted to lose like that again, and he had to get better on and off the field. Alongside Nick Marshall and Trey Mason, Coates would become a pivotal part of the offense. He caught a 68-yard touchdown and a win over Arkansas State, and then helped them come back against Mississippi State in a miracle finish. He'd have a career effort in their loss to LSU, as he caught four passes for 139 yards, but they'd end up losing. But things would start getting better. He helped them upset number 24 Ole Miss, had five catches for 100 yards and a touchdown, and a win over number 7 Texas A&M, had two touchdowns against Florida Atlantic, and went for over 100 yards and a touchdown and a road victory over Arkansas. Auburn was now the story of the year. After a win over Tennessee, they had a showdown with Georgia. After Aaron Murray got in on fourth and goal, Auburn was in a tough spot. They needed a miracle, and that is exactly what would happen. On fourth and nearly forever, Nick Marshall's pass was tipped by two Georgia defenders right into Ricardo Lewis's hands, and both Lewis, Coates, and the entire team celebrated as they knocked off the number 25 Bulldogs, setting up for a miracle showdown with Bama. Against number one Alabama, Auburn was down by a touchdown late, but Nick Marshall had a crazy jump stop pass that went to Coates, and he tied the game up with just over a minute remaining. Bama's TJ Yeldon went out of bounds with a second left, and then they missed the field goal and the kick six happened. They are now headed to the SEC Championship game to face the other Cinderella team of the SEC, the Missouri Tigers. Mizzou was ranked number five, and in the highest scoring SEC Championship of all time, Coates caught six passes for 94 yards and a touchdown, and led them to a 59-42 victory. This would send them to the National Championship game, where against number one Florida State, he caught four passes for 61 yards. Unfortunately, Kelvin Benjamin had that late touchdown, and they ended up losing in the national championship. This was tough, but Coates had a breakout year. He finished with 42 catches for 902 yards and seven touchdowns. He could have gone off to the NFL, but he decided to return in 2014. It would somewhat end up being a mistake, as he barely played the first month of the season, and his numbers just weren't the same. He had a four catch, 144 yard, and one touchdown performance against number 15 LSU, and also went for over 100 yards against number four Ole Miss, but besides that, the rest of the season was largely disappointing, and honestly, he wasn't that much of a factor. He would, though, end his career on a high note. Against number one Alabama and Jordan Hare, Coates caught five passes for a career high 206 yards and two touchdowns. They wouldn't end up winning, but that was the best performance of his entire career. In total, Coates caught 30 passes for 717 yards and four touchdowns, and would now be headed off to the 2015 NFL Draft. He was seen as a big, fast, and athletic receiver, but had his fair share of drops, and his 2014 production wasn't great. He did run a 4.43 though, had a 41-inch vertical, and was extremely strong. Originally, he was viewed as a first-round pick, but he slid all the way to the third round because it seems scouts overanalyzed him. They underestimated his heart and how hard of a worker he was. He ended up getting drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers and had lofty goals for himself. He said, quote, I want to be one of the best receivers in the game, and I want people to see that I'm a great player and a great man too. Sammy Coates was supposed to be an instant star, at least that's how it seemed in 2015. Except, 
the NFL had different plans for him. As it turns out, fans were not wearing his jerseys at games, and neither was he. He ended up being in street clothes for eight of their regular season games, and didn't even get off the bench in two other games. All in all, he caught one pass his rookie year. He used to be the big man on campus, but I guess didn't arrive in the NFL in the right mode. He said, quote, I was overweight and tired. I knew I wasn't where I needed to be to help the team win. 2016 would actually be his best year of his career, as he ended up finishing with 21 catches for 435 yards and two touchdowns. Those were decent numbers, and some thought he could be the next great Steelers receiver, but quickly it all fell apart. He dealt with some preseason injuries in 2017, and was eventually traded to the Browns for a 2018 sixth round pick. He ended up becoming the fourth string receiver on the team, and caught a total of six passes for 70 yards. He ended up getting released a year later, and then played in 12 games for the Houston Texans, catching one total pass for 12 yards. This was extremely disappointing, as four years into the league, he'd only caught in two total touchdowns and hadn't even caught 30 passes. For someone who was supposed to be a first round talent, he would unfortunately go down as a bust and disappointing. From there, he'd bounce around from the CFL and the XFL and could just never get back to the league, so he decided to do something else. He ended up coaching at Jensen Beach High School in Florida for three years and is now making his way into college football. He's now become an assistant coach for the Ohio Northern football team and will actually get a chance to coach receivers. His NFL career didn't work out, but the rest of it will. He said, quote, you don't want your future family to struggle like you did. I don't want my kid to be like I was and I want him to have it better. So now it looks like Coates will be going into coaching and will hopefully be able to rise up the ladder. I'm sure there'll be plenty of SEC teams that might want to take a chance on him someday if he ends up doing well there, because they all remember how good he was. When you think about Auburn receivers over the last decade, I'd say that most people probably automatically think of Coates, and he truly was insane for them in their 2013 run. It's unfortunate the NFL didn't work out for him, but in my eyes, he's very successful, and I think he's going to do really well as a coach. But what do you guys think? If you're an Auburn or NFL fan, what do you think went wrong for Sammy Coates? Who's another player I can take a look at next? And what other topic should I do a video on? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all of the videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.